Hello, Philip here from Totally Amazing, and today I'm going to be doing something really exciting. I'm going to draw Spider-Man! So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw Spider-Man from the beginning to end. You're going to see the process of how I work out what the picture's going to look like, all the way to the finished thing. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end. It's going to be amazing. Okay, so here we go. So what I do first is I basically put a stick figure down. It helps me determine what the shape of the pose is going to be. It lets me play around a bit. Um, I have a hand at the top and a hand at the bottom of the, on the back shoulder there. I decided to go with the, the hand at the bottom. But having a stick figure helps you just work out the pose so you don't have to be stuck on one pose. Let you play around a bit. Okay, so what I'm doing out now is I'm fleshing out the actual bulk of the body, like the muscle and the main shapes, so I get an idea of what the whole pose is going to look like. I tend to like that. So now I'm starting to put in some finer details to give me an idea where they're going to go. I'm drawing the symbol there. Now I'm putting in my webs. I do that by putting in straight lines following the path of the, the body. And then I put my little curves in to indicate the web. Just like that. Do it on that arm. Just to find some details there, put up my web a bit. And then I start doing on the chest, which I did sideways. Now what I'm doing there is I'm putting in some shadow for the blue. It just helps to define the legs a bit more, parts of the body. Makes it look a bit cooler. Now I think I just fixed the hip there. I wasn't quite happy with that, so I just altered that just to make it look a bit better. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm laying down my inks. Now you'll notice that I'm putting a thicker line around the edges. That just helps define the, the image better, makes it so you can see what parts are part of the body properly. And then as you can see here with the webbing, it's a lot thinner than the shape of the head. So just finer details, you'd leave thin lines and the outside edges just to help define it and make it a little bit thicker, like we'll do with this arm. See how I go, like I make a double line? I do that just to make the arm more prominent than the mass of lines. Otherwise, it's just so many lines, especially for the webbing, you sort of lose track of what's what. So if you have a thicker line determined for the outside, it just makes it easier. So see what I did there? I did um, a sort of curved in there for the shoulder, just to help show the actual shape of the shoulder itself. With a nice little curve in and then a curve out. So you sort of got to follow the shape of the body when you're putting in your webs. So I go, see how I do the lines? They sort of sh follow the shape of the stomach and the abs. And then the webs will go over it. And the Spider-Man that I'm doing is the more classic style the traditional Spider-Man um, costume. Because obviously there's been a lot of costumes over the years. Now what I'm doing here with the, the web, when a spider makes a web, it doesn't do it as one web coming out at once. It makes one strand and then makes another strand and it eventually becomes a web. And that's the idea of that web. So it's sort of a more organic strand of web rather than a whole web coming out at once. This was made popular by um, artist Todd McFarland back in the 90s and it's been followed through ever since because there's a logic to it really because spiders don't shoot out a web all at once they build a web strand by strand so like drawing spider-man uh, you've got to do the web strand by strand it's not necessarily hard it just takes a bit of time that's all so I'm just defining the leg there now I'm just putting my shadows following the shape of the leg and putting my webs Now I'm working on the other leg. Again, following the shape of the foot, which is what these lines do there. Follow it around, and the webs will do the same. So they'll sort of curve around with the foot. You notice it there. Now just laying a bit more colour in for the shadows. And I'll fill those bits in dark. I'm doing that now, as you can see. So all the bits in blue that are in shadow, I define them with... Um, a more prominent black mark whereas the shadows will be defined by the color in the red which is all the webbing part now there I'd, I had to find a, a different part of the the leg to be in shadow and not but I thought I'll just do the whole thing in black because it just it's just cleaner now I'm rubbing out all my pencils because I don't need them anymore I just wanted to define that leg a bit better like I said thicker lines for the edges Okay, so now I get my Dermot pencils. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting two tones 
of the colors that I'm going to be using, which are red and blue. So the blue, I do a light blue and a dark blue, which I'll start using now. So the bits obviously in more shadow are going to have the darker blue and the bits a bit more in the light are going to have the lighter blue. You'll notice it more in the leg that I work on in just a sec, this one. So the bottom there, more in shadow. Just there, and now we'll switch to the lighter blue. There. Simple but, simple but effective. Now I define my shadow, my lights a bit first here. And then I start laying down my dark as well. I leave a space just there, which I fill in light blue in a sec. See that now. So you can do it as you go along. So now what I'm doing is I'm putting down a yellow for the lighter part of the red. And I know what you're thinking, like, but Spider-Man's not yellow. No, he's not. But um, light red is pink. And it just doesn't look good when you're trying to color in Spider-Man to have a pink edge. So you put in a bit of yellow. It's a nice highlight color that complements the red. And it, it works, as you can see, as I fill in the red. Now what I'm doing here is I'm filling in a general red all over. And in, in the parts, like I said, that I want in shadow, I go over a bit heavier, as you'll see there. you really notice it in the hand in a sec. So what I'm doing here is I'm laying a general red down, and then on the back of hand, boom, there it goes. A nice, thick, dark red. So it sort of gives more definition. It's a subtle thing, but you can do it with pencil, and it works really, really well. So I'm doing it with the leg now. There's that shadow. Color the whole thing, and the shadow on the edge of the foot there. Now the final leg, shut on the back side, and then I think I just fill out the web, just put a few little details in the web, and then we are done. Ta-da! And there we have it, Spider-Man. How cool, huh? So that is my process for drawing Spider-Man. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, leave a comment down below and we'll make more content like this so you can see more stuff. It's really interesting. By the way, while you're down there, there's also a like, subscribe, and bell button. You want to just give them a bit of love, they'd really appreciate that. Speaking of love too, I also have my own comic. You will love it. It's got more of my artwork in it, obviously. And it's amazing stories, lots of adventure, really fantastic. So that's my comic, Antispy. Check it out. Other than that, thank you for watching. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Hello, Philip here from Totally Out Maybe. Where am I from? <laughs> I don't have a clue. Good Lord. <laughs>